reaction to my, my fellow presenters, I'm kind of like, man, this is like high tech, awesome, interesting stuff. You know, I have the talent, and mine's kind of like old world, boring, but I'll try and make it interesting. I deal with uh, like water conservation, drought. You know, the last big thing that happened in my industry was the Dust Bowl. <laughs> so, you know, uh, but uh, Daryl, you know, Daryl asked me, okay, so what are, what are some water challenges for the, for the future, you know, the next generation? So I'm like, you know what, let me ask the next generation. So I asked my kids, what do you guys think is the, you know, the water challenges we're going to face? So two of my kids said, well, you know, is there going to be enough water for us? One of my kids said, um, is the water going to be safe to drink? You know, and my teenage daughter is like, you know, can I take a hot shower tonight? You know, that's her challenge. Uh, so I kind of base my talk on this. Now, I deal with, uh, I think a lot about drought. Uh, I chair the, uh, the drought council. North Carolina has a, a really great drought council. Um, you know, fortunately, we're not in the drought right now. You guys can tell the rolling line in the stream. You can drive statewide. Maybe it'll dry out in the western part of the state. But, uh, but you probably heard in the news that uh, California is undergoing a big drought, probably biggest in, uh, they say, like in the last hundred years. And uh, if you read on the news, they show parched earth and dried lakes, and you know, everybody's worried and what they're going to do. Uh, and now started, everybody's starting to think about it. It's now a big, interesting topic. And people ask in my industry, well, you know, how long is this going to go on? That's the big thing, you know, help us have some perspective here. Is this like going to be a two, three year thing, or is this going to be a long term thing? And I'm not sure on this, but uh, so, someone did a study on, on, on how dry the West has been in history. Uh, the, the current drought is probably the worst in the last, let's say, 100 years, okay? uh, which is pretty bad. Uh, but some, there's been some cool research. Uh, people have, have looked back over a thousand year period. Now, when you talk to climatologists, I'm not a climatologist, I'm an engineer. When you talk to climatologists, they think in terms of thousands of years. And they've done some cool three ring studies uh, that well, they put out some data that showed how, dress, how, how, how dry the West has been in the last thousand years. Now, if you look way to the, to the right, um, you see that little red blip there? That's the current drought right now. The red is drought, the, the, the blue is, is, is wet. Now, if you look at the last 150, that's when California became a state. Fortunately, for the last 150 or so years, it's been the, one of the wettest periods in history. And everything's been built and based on that wetness. Now, if you go back way in time, if you want to see how bad it could get, if you look back about, you know, 800 to 1,000 years ago, I mean, there's 200-year-long dry spells that were drastically dry. I mean, could you imagine if that, if we're just at the beginning of one of those mega droughts again? But that's how bad things, you know, you want to talk about how bad things could get? Look, I mean, you know, you look back at history, it could get bad. You never know. It might, it might get, we might enter a wettest period in history. You just don't know. So it's in, an interesting topic. It's boring, yet it's important. You know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of things that, you know, a lot of things we do are based on this. So water scarcity is definitely something, you know, the next generation is thinking about. You know, are we going to have uh, water available with our current infrastructure? Another thing is water safety. Now, this, this is uh, something uh, that's probably a little more interesting from a science perspective. Uh, before uh, I worked uh, in my current position in state government, I worked in the food and beverage industry as a, as a, wa as a more chemical engineer by training. Uh, I worked in uh, the water quality division of a, 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 a large beverage company. I can't tell you who they were, but uh, I bleed blue, let's put it that way. And, uh, I didn't work for the red guys. And uh, my job was to think about what's in our water. I mean, an interesting question. There was a couple of us, and that's all we did. And we thought, you know, what's in the water that makes the beverage? You know, this company is selling probably, I think, 80 billion gallons of water in their beverages every year. And one of the interesting topics that came up when I was working for them was pharmaceuticals. Do you guys remember that, the pharmaceutical scare? Well, it kind of hit the, hit the headlines, and it kind of, you know, people lost interest because it's kind of like, okay, what's the next big thing? They're still out there. Uh, this is an interesting study. I think it was in 2008. The Associated Press put this together. From uh, at that time, all of the utilities that, that were 
catch your pharmaceuticals in their drinking water and be sold to the public. Now, it's interesting, you know, we're going to sell it to your person. Okay. But, you know, a lot of these chemicals are not, like, measured or regulated. So there's no law saying you have to remove them. So they're kind of just there. Um, now, talk about, you know, it's one thing to say, okay, it's out there in nature. It's another thing to say it's in my can of soda. You know? And we put all that, I mean, companies are putting tons of you know, resources and time into thinking about, is this product safe? Not only, like, you know, scientifically safe, but from a public perception standpoint. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a daunting challenge. You know, water safety going forward for the next generation you think about all the chemicals that we think of, that we use, they all end up in our water world. You know, the big one right now, we follow this all the time with my job, the big one right now is a micro D in, in uh, personal care products. You guys have, you know, you buy something, a little micro D, and you rub it, and you take it. There is like, uh, I mean, I don't know, millions of tons of them in the great area. And fish are eating it, because that's where all the big production companies the fish are eating microbes, and we're eating the fish. So a lot of plastics are coming into the food chain through that. So interesting stuff. So safety in the next generation. Uh, the last thing I'll talk about is equity. Water equity. Uh, is there is it there's not only is there enough water for us? Is there enough water for everybody? Okay, this is a great picture. I, I had the opportunity to work overseas in Africa for about ten years. South Africa, Kenya, and Ghana on water projects and talk about the most life-changing, like life-altering experiences I had. Uh, we're all around working on small village water projects, you know, trying to make sure the water is clean for people who can barely make ends meet day to day. Um, this is probably going forward for, uh, for our next, the next generation, the biggest challenge that people will face. You know, right now in the world of what, seven billion people, there's about a billion people that don't have uh, any adequate safe drinking water. And, and about of the seven billion, three billion people don't have adequate sanitation. Sani by sanitation, I mean, I, I believe it's a half mile walk to a toilet. Three billion people don't have a toilet within half a mile of where they live. And it's an incredible, daunting, I mean, how, you know, how, how do we ensure equity for this type of thing. And this is my last slide here. I have a couple of images on some of the projects I worked on. Uh, on the top left, there's a slum in Kenya called Kibera. I don't know if you guys, what there would be said about it. It's these, a billion, pe oh no, sorry, a million people in two square miles. Incredible. The picture on the top right is a picture inside that slum. Um, that's just, I mean, just incredible concentration of people and, you know, and all of the waste that goes along with that. I tell people I fell into this career by accident, literally. I fell into a stream like that when I was working on a project. And, you know, when I went and worked on those projects, it was a very academic exercise for me. When I came out of that stream, it was a very passionate <laughs> <laughs> career change moment for me. I thought, how can people live like this and go through this every day? Uh, the bottom three pictures, I've actually worked for a great organization. Uh, you know Paul Newman, the actor, he's the the Newman's Only Foundation. And a lot of that, all that money goes to charity. He created uh, one of the final charities called the Safe Water Network. And I can give him credit. Uh, great, great project. Um, that, that middle one there, the yellow line is um, there was a project inside that slum, we, we, we brought in some water source. And those are people lining up. I mean, people, the typical family in Kenya spends an hour a day getting one of those dairy cans of water. And that dairy can is about five gallons. About, thir about, about 30 minutes waiting to fill it, and then you know, 30 minutes kind of filling it, bringing it home and everything. So we're talking an hour a day. They're, the income they spend on getting that dairy can is about 10% how much they make in a month. So imagine the typical family, what, in North Carolina makes about 50000 a year. Can you imagine your water bill is $5,000? It's a 
alternative. But for them, that's what they do. Every day, they spend that much money on getting that one jerry can, and it's about a, they want to think about a gallon per person per day for their family. And that's what they get. But, you know, for them, that, that causes a magic. Just real quick, um, this is the work in Ghana we did. Uh, we put up this pipe. It's sort of almost like a gas station. You know, just making the water more available to people so you pump the water to the